be full. The South Carolina State Fair is outside, so there are some people trying to get into this stadium. A short kick by Mitch Jeter is fielded at the 17-yard line, and the Gators Ooh. take a big hit. Up to the 35-yard line goes Tyreek Sapp. How about that? Big defensive lineman can't bring him to the ground, and Sapp is feeling it. He's a spirited player as he goes over to the sideline. That's Graham Mertz. He threw a lot of interception and, and wasn't so good with his completion percentage when he was at Wisconsin stench. He's been outstanding with the Gators. 80% completion percentage this year, only two interceptions, and you saw him beat Vanderbilt last week. Really proficient at this position. They want him to be more explosive if he can. They need protection to hold up better for him to deliver the ball downfield. He's got Austin Barber back as his left tackle today. He still has Montrell Johnson jumping over defenders. And Johnson gets 10 on the first play of the game. Johnson is going to have the help of Trevor Etienne today, but he's been terrific in every game this year. And he was able to stick with the whole nice point of attack right there. Hurdles, a little bit of the clutter there. Some traffic in the hole. Great job keeping his feet chopping. He picks up that first first down. There's Austin Barber. Missed last week versus Vanderbilt at left tackle. He's been nicked up all season. Johnson. 135 yards rushing last week. Play action. Mertz underneath. Nice rhythm throw inside the 35 where Arliss Boardingham, who was also outstanding against Vandy last week, picks up 24 more. A young guy. Guy that played wide receiver in high school, still learning the position. Comes all the way across the formation. Excellent protection. And then heavy play action. Seven guys in protecting for the pocket. Quick throw out to the wing. It's Johnson. And the run after the catch takes it down to the 21-yard line. The Gators are on the march here. 10 on the first play, 24 on the second, 9 on the third play, and they're already near the red zone. Uh, if you're in a visiting stadium, especially one that can be as hostile as williams Bryce can be, you want that opening drive to be a successful one. They've quieted the crowd almost immediately. Johnson hit right near the first down marker by Nick Eman Worry, terrific sophomore that was an All-American last year. It's going to be marked just short. It's third down. Yeah, heck of a play by Eman Worry coming up there to fill in the hole. Otherwise, it's an easy first. Mertz tries to sneak it. That extra push from the interior of the offensive line gets him to the 20-yard line and a fresh set of downs. The initial surge wasn't there. You see that a lot with QB sneaks. Well, Burtz doesn't get under center a ton. He sneaks up under there. You know the sneak's coming. Might have gotten away a little bit early right there at right guard. He, he has to come off the field because his helmet came off. So Max Brown, the redshirt freshman from Tulsa, came in at the end of the game last week against Vanderbilt. Looked good. 4-4 four four passing for 26 yards. Florida has scored on 23 straight red zone possessions as this ball will be snapped from the 20. And it's Johnson who goes ahead for a couple. Off comes Brown and Mertz comes back. In South Carolina defensively, they talked about it with Clayton White. There's so much pre-snap motion and movement by Florida. They were saying we want to be simple, get our cleats in the ground. But Florida with these big gainers. You open up this possession right away. The 10-yard run. The South Carolina defense really hasn't been able to even catch their breath or get their cleats in the grass just yet. The aforementioned Trevor Etienne is back, and he's in the backfield behind Mertz. Fake to him. Rolling out. Nice, easy completion to the big tight end Hayden Hansen. And Hansen gets a first down. It'll be first and goal Gators. A lot of targets for the tight ends in the red zone. And especially with Jonathan Odom, who's out with an injury. We've already seen Arliss Boardingham, as, as you mentioned, last week versus Vanderbilt. Kind of had a breakout game. And now Hayden Hansen, a former high school quarterback, getting in on the action with an early target and catch. Etienne 
straight ahead inside the five and stays on his feet near the three where Kilgore and Dial make the tackle. Missed last week's game with an upper body injury. Was really splitting the carry stints before last week. Yeah, there's no doubt. A guy that's good kind of uh, by committee on the running game. Try him again to the doorstep inside the touchdown. Inside the one and they say he crossed the line. Trevor's third touchdown of the season. What an opening drive for Billy Napier's Gators. Yeah, it's really a sense of urgency this entire drive. And that was really close. Etienne definitely having to kind of extend that ball at the end of this run. Big Austin Barber finishing his man, Elijah Davis, into the end zone. Looked like his elbow was down before he crossed the it goal may line. May have been. May have been. And Stan Murray, our replay official, is going to take another look. You know, the question is, uh, if on a down-the-line shot, you know, he extended it, and it looked like it came back a little bit as he was going to the ground. Billy Napier, who's been coaching against the Gamecocks throughout his career, he used to be the offensive coordinator at Clemson. Career started in South Carolina State and also Coach Furman. He was joking with us last night, Stench. He said, I've never been in a position to cheer for the Gamecocks. I've always been <laughs> against the Gamecocks, no matter where I've been. He's coached or played for everyone around, everywhere but. Let's see if there's anything definitive. Well, it's really tough. You know, there's just so much traffic in front of that. When the ruling on the field was a touchdown. That is an eye chart. Get out your binoculars. That's a long way to look. I don't know that you can tell. It's a great angle just so far away. Steve Marlowe, our referee today, talking upstairs to Stan Murray. It's either a touchdown for ETN, which is his third of the year, or it's third and goal for the Gators. A couple of inches away from the goal line. Regardless, it's an impressive first drive for the Gators. Right, so here's the pylon look again. Let's see if, you know, does the ball break the plane right before his elbow would establish him down? Man, yeah, really hard to tell right there. I'll tell you what was telling to me in, in that opening drive, Taylor, was the sense of urgency that the offense had. You know, this wasn't a frantic pace for Florida. But they got over the ball quickly, partly owing to the big plays. Ten plus yards, quick first down, a first down run, and all of a sudden a fresh set of downs. And they kept leaning into that series. It, was, there was not, it wasn't as deliberate of an approach offensively as we've seen. Shane Beamer, the head coach of the Gamecocks, in his third season against Billy Napier. Second year as head coach of the Gators. Gamecocks two and three on the year have lost to three top 20 teams so far and what I think is the hardest schedule of any team in the Southeastern Conference and yeah Florida has had two tough losses on the chin away from home to two good teams that are also in the top 25 Utah and Kentucky and both these teams they have been tested early on in the season Another look at it. This is what they're looking at up top. That's our Trying best to look, Stitch. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Yeah. Touchdown. The folks here don't like it. I don't know that, like we were saying, that there's nothing definitive. That ball easily could have been across the front edge of that line, of the goal line. That's all it takes before Etienne went down. And Boy, so efficient. 50 of their yards of that 77-yard drive, 50 of them were on first down. That's exactly what you want. It's second down in playbook, if not a first down, the first rattle out of the trap. Trey Smack. Perfect kicking the football this year. Nine plays, 66 yards in just over four minutes for Billy Napier's Gators on the first drive of the game. HBC, Steve Spurrier, the winningest coach 
in Florida and South Carolina's history. It's just amazing. How about that? It was really started the winning tradition at Florida. And then comes here to South Carolina, wins the only division championship here in the SEC, last year of divisions. Trey Smack kicks it over Xavier Leggett's head. And Spencer Rattler come out at quarterback for the Gamecocks for the sixth time this season. He's been outstanding. Thrown for over 1,400 yards, 73% completion. You see it's top 10 in all of college football. Just seven touchdowns, but has been so steady with brand new offensive coordinator Dowell Loggins. And the difficulty that they've had, as you see that bottom stat, 22 sacks. He's been pressured on 76 of his dropbacks. That's more than anybody else in the conference. And you saw Trey Jones lining up at left guard in the lineup today as Rattler throws beyond the line of scrimmage, and it's Amarian Brown who runs up and gains a yard. Jones is starting at left guard today. Nick Gargiulo, who was starting at left guard, is just to Jones' right. He's the center. And Vershawn Lee, who was the center, is now the right tackle. So they're throwing the kitchen sink at the Gators today, trying to find their best five to protect Rattler. As you saw, has been sacked 23 times this year. To the ground on the second play, this has been a problem too, as Mario Anderson loses a yard. It'll be third and 10. Uh, penetration right now by number 99, Cam Jackson. So he just blows up the whole play. They're trying to get a little gap scheme going. Trey Knox coming across. And instead, he just runs it down from behind. You see Rashawn Lee out there at tackle and a big third down. 10 plus, one of the best third down defenses in the conference. Rattler, pocket breaking down, throws and throws behind Brown, and there's the flag. Didn't have a chance to make a play on the ball. How about the patience of Spencer Rattler? I mean, that pocket's collapsing all around him. He's done this all season. It was something that offensive coordinator Dowell Loggins was lauding about Spencer Rapp. Pass interference, defense number eight. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. See Kimber in coverage, and that's the, you see, easy call. Grabbing that jersey, but watch the pressure now. Six-man pressure. Uniman, Uniman Milan almost got there. Kimber with the pass interference call, Florida has committed 10 penalties per road game this year. And here's Mario Anderson getting a block around the left edge and finds daylight in the Gator territory all the way down to the 32. Well, Anderson breached the 100 yard mark last week. 10 carries over 100 yards. Fantastic hole on the left side. 30 yards for this new discovery for Shane Beamer's offense, the Division II transfer from nearby Newberry College. Rattler will run up and get out of bounds near the 25-yard line. How about the finish? How about the finish from the quarterback? On the opposing sideline, Jason Marshall coming up. Spencer Rattler, he ends up kind of delivering the blow. You don't want to see your quarterback doing that a ton, but nothing will fire up an offense more than a quarterback that's willing to lower his shoulder for some yardage. Rattler's got Moxie. He picked up eight. Back to Anderson. First down inside the Gator 15, down near the 13-yard line. He was a Division II All-American last year, running for over 1,500 yards with 19 touchdowns. He's had 189 yards rushing in the last two weeks. Had a big, long 75-yard run against Tennessee in that game two weeks ago. Yeah, a big explosive run, generated most of that 100 yards, running behind that left side of the line. You see partly why the South Carolina staff put big Trey Jones in there at left guard. Anderson follows Lee. Another first down inside the 10. We were looking at Anderson down on the field. This guy's got some thick lowers. You better come in there ready to tackle. A swing and a miss. This is something that plagued Florida on the road versus Kentucky. You have a free defender, an unblocked defender in the hole, 
He's got to make that tackle. Austin, Kentucky did it over and over again. It's Austin Armstrong, the 30-year-old defensive coordinator for the Gators. Anderson out, Joiner in, fake to Joiner. Rattler moving his feet, throws back to the end zone. Got it. Trey Knox. Knox was open initially, but Rattler had to kind of scramble a little bit. Great job by the former receiver. Knox, a guy who's bulked up a little bit to play tight end and working with his quarterback. He's rolling left, you run with him. Working that back end line of the end zone. He's becoming more and more of a target in the red zone. Seven targets in that part of the field in a touchdown. Gators go right down the field and score. How about Shane Beamer's Gamecocks with this brand new offensive line? They still have this guy slinging the football. Tie game in Columbia. A lot of the people that drove through that traffic have made their way into Willie B. And this raucous sellout crowd, they love what they saw from the Gamecocks offense on that last drive. Hey, coming up next after us, it's Brady Cook and the Missouri Tigers taking on Devin Leary and number 24 Kentucky in our SEC Saturday night matchup to top 25 teams. And this is what I love about SEC football in 2023, Stench. I have no idea who's going to win that game. Isn't it true? I mean, Missouri, given LSU all they wanted last week at home, narrowly missing on the upset win over those Tigers. Brady Cook has been playing unconscious this year. Outstanding. I don't like this game. About a, just about an even line going in. Fake to ETN. Mertz is in trouble. Gets out of there. And he's going to tuck it and run just past the 25 yard line where Jordan Strawn chased him out of bounds. That's a pickup of four for the transfer from Wisconsin. Again, accuracy issues in Madison for four years. A lot of the Badger fans wanted somebody else at quarterback. Gators, after Anthony Richardson went pro, said, we'll take you in Gainesville, and he has been outstanding. And Coach Napier's offense, ETN, running into Gamecock defenders, only gets a couple. It's going to be third and three. Well, Mertz, both Mertz and Rattler, actually, they don't push the ball down a ton. Rattler does more often. Both of them rank 13th and 14th in the conference as far as air yards, how far they're throwing it downfield. A lot of quick passes, a lot of underneath throws. The third downs defensively have played the Gamecocks all season long. And this is a third and manageable. Facing pressure throws quickly and it's Hanson again who finds a soft spot in the Gamecock defense for 16 yards. South Carolina tried to pressure. They tried to bring Eamon Worry off the edge. Just couldn't get there quite in time. Hanson open, just sat down right there over the seat, right there in the middle of the field. Two targets for Hanson. A couple of catches for him early in this game. Those tight ends figuring prominently for the Gator offense. All of them young, too, with Dante Sanders and Jonathan Odom out. Mertz wants to load up. He's going to be pressured out of the pocket. And he gets ahead past midfield of the 47, but a flag does come in. A couple of times now where we've seen the Gators offensively on an early down try to load up on a play action. Holding. Defense number three. Ten yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So Donald Fortune. Suddenly, Florida's already at the Gamecocks 37. We saw on the previous drive, the pass interference aid the South Carolina scoring answer, and now the Gators the beneficiary of a holding call. Part of the reason maybe why Mertz had to scramble with the ball. Nowhere to go downfield because of the hold. Maybe a free play here. ATN on the free play gets out of bounds inside the 30. see the signal the offsides on the defense but
You know, Taylor, I get, you know, ETN was banged up a week ago. But unless you've got a line to gain, I'm not a big fan of a running back ducking out of bounds right there at the end of the run. Pick up two more yards. I like Outside. you have a guy bearing Defense down on you. 46. Emma Neutral's on at the snap. It's a five-yard penalty and replay first down. A heck of a running back, no doubt. Pick up all the yards you can get. Talked about a little bit earlier, the other number seven, Spencer Rattler, quarterback, lowers his shoulders, picks up a couple extra yards. I get one to protect yourself. It's early in this game. Pick up another two yards. You duck out of bounds like that right there at the end of a run. It's a nice run. So Florida will have it first and five now after a couple of Gamecocks penalties. At the 32, Mertz swings it out to Pearsall. And Pearsall is pushed out of bounds quickly by Jalen Kilgore, true freshman that has been all over the field. Pearsall now has caught a pass in 35 straight games, the eighth longest streak in college football. Transfer from Arizona State, who was great for the Sun Devils, and he's been great for the Gators. Just a guy that's been incredibly steady, as young as Florida is out wide at wide receiver. He definitely has earned the trust of Graham Mertz, by far the most targeted receiver in their offense. Mertz hands to Johnson, and Johnson doesn't get much. Tackle made by big Alex Boogie Huntley. Nice job by Huntley, working down the line to make this play. The Gators gash the Gamecocks on that opening possession on the ground. An opportunity, a similar down and distance right here, third and manageable. Last time, South Carolina brought pressure off the edge with Eamon Warwick. Didn't get there in time. They were able to hit their tight end right over the middle. Mertz throws and Johnson can't make the catch. Thought about the footsteps. It's fourth down, and we'll see if Coach Napier keeps the offense on the field or elects to bring Trey Smack out. Smack has a cannon for a leg, and here comes Trey. Uncharacteristic drop by Montreal Johnson. When you look at the way that they target receivers, Johnson the second most targeted receiver in this offense. Are you superstitious or a little stitious? <laughs> He's never missed a kick in college football. Seven for seven, this from 48 yards. See, don't believe all those superstitions. Perfect. Florida leads South Carolina 10-7 with 4.08 to go in the first quarter. You know, if you watch Out of Pocket with Alyssa Lang and Takeo Spikes the other night, you know that Alyssa picked the Aggies to beat the Volunteers on the road in, in Neyland Stadium. That's another could-go-either-way game. Yeah, yeah, one that's kind of a, a benchmark game, right? Who's next best in the West? I be it. Speaking of Miss Lang, let's go down to the field and her. Guys, saw in the Gamecocks' first offensive drive how huge Mario Anderson was, and his story's been talked about coming over from Newberry, but when I talked to him this week, it's just so, so inspirational to learn about how he was originally committed to Charleston Southern. He described some trials and tribulations he had in childhood, some mistakes that he made that prevented him from actually suiting up for CSU. He gets a second chance from Coach Knight at Newberry, does the red shirt, does the walk-on thing to try to be a early contributor. Boy, has he been. Down the field, one-on-one -on -one ball, caught! Nick Harbour, the big true freshman from Washington, D.C. that all Gamecocks fans have been going crazy about. And Shane Beamer's got a fist pump, 45 yards. This guy's a world-class athlete. Track star type speed, Olympic type speed, but size, unbelievable. We were down on the field. This guy's, he's a Bojangles picnic pack away from being a defensive end. <laughs> there is one of those right outside the stadium, by the way. Let's play action again. Underneath throw, this time to Trey Knox, and Knox gets down to the 22-yard line. You know, back to Harbor for a second. We were talking about him coming into the stadium today, Stench. 
just his size alone at 6'5", 241 pounds, has to get the Gators' attention. Oh, I mean, how could you ignore it? I mean, that's a big body moving incredibly fast through your secondary. And there it wasn't as if Kimber was out of position. He just got boxed out on that ball. Second and two to the ground. DK Joyner, super senior. He's played just done just about everything in this stadium except sell hot dogs. Is it's a first down run. First downs. First downs for both teams. But South Carolina picking up where it left off prior to that big throw to Nick Harbor, 57 of their 62 yards. Now 110 of their 117 offensive yards have come on first downs. Empty backfield, at least for now. Juju McDowell is on the field. He catches the ball, and he goes ahead just past the 18 to the 17-yard line. You know, you wondered what would happen with this Gamecock offense after a couple of guys went in the portal. Marshawn Lloyd, Jaheim Bell, the beginning of the year against UNC, Juju McDowell to carry on Joyner carrying the ball. And as Alyssa was talking about, they've discovered Mario Anderson in these last couple of weeks. It's been a huge new wrinkle. McDowell's in the game now, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Junior from Bainbridge, Georgia, has seen action in every game this year, has been pressed to be a starter at times. He comes in as a complimentary back and gives the Gamecocks the lead. What an answer from South Carolina. So watch this play. We're gonna end up getting a puller around, around on the edge. Bunch of circles instead. Just watch the play. Watch this right guard pull around. Fantastic movement right at the point of attack. What a great job. This is what the South Carolina offense has lacked. They have ran zero gap scheme runs. That means you get a puller. You're running to a point of attack. It's not all zone, tight zone, wide zone. Versus Tennessee, they ran zero of these plays, partly because they couldn't displace linemen. They can't move them off the ball because of the size. And in the bye week, Dowell Loggins, the offensive coordinator, see him there in the box. He goes down and watches one-on-one -on -one pass rush and says, we got an answer here. We can put a guy in there at left guard at Trey Jones, and he can give us some pop at the point of attack. You saw on that run, the entire right side of the Florida defensive front get collapsed. It was an easy insertion on the pole. You come around, you got an easy run downhill for Juju McDowell, who's been really quiet this year offensively. Gators get it at the 25. Tonight, after Kentucky and Mizzou, the SEC football final crew will take you through the biggest stories of the day, break down all the games. That's at 10.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app or whenever Kentucky and Mizzou is finished. Comes Graham Mertz. The Gators have scored on each possession, but it was a field goal on the second drive. Conversely, South Carolina has scored touchdowns on both drives. Spencer Rattler has been outstanding in the first quarter of every game this year. Gamecock offense with these answers, keeping the crowd in this thing. Mertz has time. One-on-one -on -one ball underthrown to Eugene Wilson, and no flag comes in. Nick Eman Worry was running right with him. Nick Eman Worry, he's kind of the defensive version of Nick Harbor. Big and long. You know, if I'm Wilson right there, I think I try to work back to the football, try to create more contact. Instead, he kind of just kept running on that route. Ball was underthrown. Trying to get the football downfield, something the Gators have not really had a lot of success with this season. Mertz on second and 10. Steps up, throws underneath. And it's a first down for Wilson. They go right back to the true freshman, coming off his best game as a Gator last week, where he caught eight balls and had his first touchdown. He's so talented. They were so excited to get him back. He's been nicked up a little bit. 
but a guy that can be incorporated in this offense so many different ways. The gadget guy, the guy that you can push downfield, can't get the ball to him enough, get it to his hands quickly. He's a guy that can make him miss. It's Marcus Burke at the bottom of your screen coming onto the field of the last second. Swing it out again to Wilson. Just keep getting him the ball any way you can. And it's another first down for the true freshman from Tampa. Well, how about that for versatility, right? You line up out wide, now you line up in the backfield, split backfield set that time, and allow Montreal Johnson to be your lead blocker. Just a quick pitch and catch, long handoff, and let Eugene Wilson, the third, use that skill set out in space. Mertz. Steps into it, throws, and that ball is deflected near the line of scrimmage. He's trying to get it to Khalil Jackson, but a hand got on it here at the line. The pocket was collapsing late. It looked like it was Nick Barrett able to get his hands up on it. He was trying to get it back out there to Khalil Jackson as he was working back to his quarterback. Really nowhere to go with that football, Taylor. You look downfield. And when the protection was there, nowhere really to deliver the football. Mertz has already thrown it 10 times in the first quarter, wants to throw it for an 11th time, drifts back, incomplete. He's facing Tonka Hemingway in his face, third down. The Hemingway won. Almost right now, this is the most difficult pressure to face. Not edge pressure, it's interior. You see Hemingway. Able to win, gets pressure. Mertz is falling backwards. He had Frazier's. He was open. Listen to Williams Bryce yell at Graham Mertz on a third and ten. Too much time, and Pearsall's down there inside the 35. Inside the 30. Pickup of 23 for the senior from Arizona. You nailed it, Taylor. Nice pickup. Rush five. Had six in to protect. Pearsall cleared the field entirely. Eamon Worry was trailing. You can see Mertz. Cool under pressure. Both these quarterbacks, they've seen a ton of pressure this season. The two most pressured quarterbacks in this conference. And they'll stand in there. That time a clean pocket for Mertz to operate from. Merch doesn't have to snap it if he doesn't want to, but they will get it off as the quarter expires. Steps into that throw, and that was a dangerous pass, but it goes off of Johnson, incomplete, at the end of the first quarter, and Mertz is down on the ground, but gets up slowly at the end of one. Gamecocks lead the Gators 14 to 10 as we go to the second. Coach, what's the message to your defense right now? Uh, execute, do your job. We call a pressure, our corner comes free and stops. Uh, we call, we, we got a chance to get the quarterback on the ground. We teach our defensive ends, don't jump. He jumped, we jumped on sides. We had a holding penalty. We're in man coverage and we get up across her. Just freaking do your job. Thanks coach. Thank you. In the moment, that's what Shane Beamer is feeling right now. He loves the way his offense has looked so far, up 14 to 10, but the Gators have had the ball three times. They've gotten into Gamecocks territory every time. They've thrown a pass on every play on this drive, and that's underthrown looking for Eugene Wilson with Eamon Worry all over him again. Yeah, that's twice now where they tried to target Eugene Wilson downfield, Eamon Worry in coverage both times. And the ball's just underthrown. Hard for Wilson to come back and make a play on that one. Earlier, you thought maybe he could fight back through the coverage. This is what Shane Beamer was just talking to Alyssa about right here. Gamecox forced Florida into a third and ten, but they've converted three of their first four the Gators have so far in the game. Mertz pumps, pressured out, flag comes in. And he'll take on defenders, get inside the 25. It would be fourth down. Let's see what the flag's about.
holding. Offense number 76, 10 yard penalty, replay third down. Big Damian George, had to play left tackle last week. He is right there on the edge. And he's on this game late. When Mertz tries to escape, it's that right arm. You just got to let him go. You see Huntley, he's like, hey, hey, get that flag out of your pocket. And the problem was Mertz had to escape out and around that block. You got to take the penalty, right? It would have been fourth and three or four. Instead, it's third and 20. Mertz throws. They get the yardage back. Pearsall gets near the 25 to the 26, where Jalen Kilgordon makes another good tackle. And Florida's field goal team comes back onto the field again. You nailed it, though, Taylor, right? You take that penalty at least force the offense to try to gain that yardage back, make it a more manageable field goal attempt. Huge penalty that time. You know, Mertz, on that previous one, thought maybe he could sit in there just a second longer before escaping out to the right. So you see a lot of those holding penalties happen. This is from 44 yards for Smack. Mahalik was the kicker to start the year. He struggled and was one for three against Utah. And they bring in the sophomore from Severna Park, Maryland, and he's been perfect. And we're going to enjoy some of that here in the booth in just a little bit. All right, let's be honest. Stench will steal all of it. <laughs> Fielded at the eight by Leggett. And Xavier gets up to the 23rd line. Hey, scan the QR code to share your home gate, home gating experience for your chance to win a trip to the SEC Championship. Brought to you by Bush's Beans. So look at the State Fair of South Carolina in the background. What is, what is your, are you a fried donut cheeseburger fan or do you think this hot dog that they're bringing up to us later is going to be more your pleasure? Yes. It's exactly. affirmative. Okay. Both of those. <laughs> Mario Anderson carries ahead and gets a couple. Alyssa was talking about his story, which is remarkable. Coming by coming from nearby Newberry College and running for over fifteen hundred yards there and immediately becoming the top tailback for the Gamecocks this year. South Carolina already with seventy-four rushing yards. Here in the first half. Second seven, a toss ahead to Leggett. Xavier running in traffic is right near a first down. As he goes up to the 34 yard line, he's going to come up slowly. Uh, he, that was a nasty looking tackle. I think he's going to be okay. It looked, it looked pretty rough there initially. They're able to capture the edge cleanly. Nice blocking out wide. You can see they're late coming in. Kind of caught that left leg by Jaden Hill. What a hold his leg. What a season he's had. Anderson, he gets a, a yard there, Alyssa. To kind of finish that story I was telling earlier, guys, he got to Newberry knowing he was undersized. He was around 175 pounds. They lift, but not every day. So his uncle Sam helped hook him up with a local gym membership. He would hit up his high school strength coach, Joey Shepard from Stratford High School. And after he was done with practice at Newberry or done with the lift, he'd go hit the local gym to generate some of that strength you were talking about earlier, Stinch. On a second and nine, Rattler's facing the pressure, dumps it off very quickly to Knox. And Knox is tripped up at the 38 yard line. This will be the first third down. That's a great tackle by Shamar James, wow. It looked almost like it was going to get set up just enough, and James, just a shoestring tackle. Otherwise, he'd probably get a conversion on that screen. First third down. South Carolina's been great with the ball so far today. Look at this defensive front. They're just kind of milling around up there, trying to confuse the protection. Looks like South Carolina's going to take a timeout because of it. Timeout, South Carolina, their first of the half. To be clear, since there was a third and 10 that South Carolina had earlier in the game, but there was a penalty on the Gators on that 
play, so it wiped out the conversion rate. South Carolina struggled on this down in part because of their issues getting yardage on first and second down and having a bunch of negative plays throughout the season that Dowell Loggins, the offense coordinator, was telling us about yesterday. They've been, so so far in the game, they've been much more proficient. Especially on first and second, like, like you just mentioned. I mean, they really have it. They faced a third down, got the conversion due to penalty. But what's the best way to avoid a really difficult down, one that you struggled with all season long, and versus a defense that's among the best, not just in the conference, but in the country, in the Florida Gators. They do an excellent job of winning on first and second down. They haven't in this game. South Carolina has been lights out on their early down runs and plays. What do they like on a third and six? against the skater defense. Wow, no early thing. snap. Nick Gargiulo, who's been the backup center all year. He just, no one else was expecting it. Gargiulo he shoots this ball back there. You know what? I, I wonder if what happens here is they got a moved call, move call up there by the defense. Kai Kroger, first punt of the game, and it's a phenomenal one God. that sends Pearsall back inside his 20-yard line to the 19. That's a 58-yard punt by one of the best in the country. <laughs> Alyssa Lane, Matt Stinchcomb, <laughs> and Taylor Zarzer. We prefer this. 14-13. Yeah. Let's go down to the wire this year. Mertz hands to Etienne. Florida has not run the ball much in the last couple of drives, and Trevor gets up to the 21-yard line. That previous possession, they got completely away from the run. You know, that entire possession was nothing but passes. Ten straight prior to that attempt. Mertz, the redshirt junior from Overland Park, Kansas, by way of Wisconsin. Back to Etienne in the ground again. First down. And out near midfield where he's pushed out by DQ Smith. He caught South Carolina in a run stunt. See the defensive front kind of working all to their left. It was perfect. Perfect play call versus that stunt, no way of knowing that it's coming. That stunt ends up accommodating exactly where the Gators were going to try to attack. Nice hole for ETN. First on the scene in this game for eight for 100 and a touchdown last year, 28 more on that carry for the sophomore from Jennings, Louisiana. Fake to Trevor. Mertz rolls out. Has options, throws all the way down the field. Caught, Khalil Jackson. 45-yard catch for the sophomore. There's the deep shot. Had an underneath throw if he wanted it. Kept moving, working to his right. And how about Jackson? Great focus on that catch. That was spectacular as ETN gets nothing on the first and goal run. This catch laid out, kind of had to hang in the air a little bit. Can we get both hands on it? Got that focus locked in. For little Jackson, first big deep shot that we've seen. The Gators have tried to load up. See if they could push the football downfield. Haven't been super successful. Finally hit one. Looked like a gold glove outfielder. Yeah. Second and goal. Down near the six. Fake to ETN. Mertz to the end zone. Touchdown, Jackson. Had six catches on the season before a breakout performance last week. He has two big ones on this drive. He's had two options because Hayden Hanson was wide open to the opposite side. Great job by Jackson. Back-to-back -back catches. Marcella Style 
Didn't quite break that up. How about that off the punt? You get a defensive stop. You're able to capitalize and take the lead. And we're going to reset the play clock there, just making sure that Jackson controlled the football all the way to the ground there, which he did. Five plays, 82 yards in just over a couple of minutes. And the Gators are back on top, 20 to 14. There is a flag down. because Steve Marlowe's walking all the way over to Billy Napier to make sure he wants to decline this. Turned into a beautiful day here in Columbia after some overcast weather the last couple of days and some rain has come through the area. Offside, defense number one, lined up in the neutral zone, half the distance to the goal, retry. Okay, so Napier will take it after a long discussion with the side judge over there. They'll go for two and try to turn this into a seven-point game. You go back to that big play for Jackson. In South Carolina, you know, the comments from Coach Beamer said, just do your job. And part of what they've run into this season, they've allowed these explosive plays. You get receivers behind you. Coming into this game, they were last in the conference in that area. 20-plus yard plays that make it downhill. It certainly hurt them there. Set up that scoring opportunity. And now, of course, as you mentioned, now a chance for the Gators to push this to lead a little bit further. Potentially seven points. Florida's just one for four on two-point plays this season. And it's ETN and the Wildcat at quarterback. Throwing, touched, well, two-point conversion good to Hanson as ETN throws the two-pointer. Florida has scored on every drive so far in the game, and it's been somebody new each time. This time it's Khalil Jackson making an insane catch, and then the touchdown grab. Gators back on top by seven. Offense has been fantastic, 237 total yards already in the game as South Carolina will get it at the 25, Stinch. So this is what a lot of folks have been talking about. We've seen these plays called, so here's Khalil Jackson right here to start off this play. And as it unfolds, what we've seen a lot from the Florida offense is they'll run play action. This time they're booting out. Look at the options. So you've got chances. You can drop it to Wilson if you want. Here comes your tight end coming across. Here's Pearsall. So you could drop to any of these intermediate routes, and instead you're going to hit Khalil Jackson. We've seen throughout this season where Mertz will say, you know what, I'm just going to take the money that's on the table. Can't go wrong here. That time throws a strike deep. Your move, Mr. Rattler. There's Xavier Leggett tiptoeing the sideline. Looks just fine, but he did step out of bounds, it appears. Pass the 35 down at the 32-yard line. That is a pickup of 43 yards. What about the punch, counter-punching going on in this game? One punt that we've seen, we're not for a bad snap. Who knows if that happens? And you see, is it coming in some stoppage? He straddled that sideline for a good 20 yards. Get is fourth in the nation 
in receiving yards per game at over 121. Limped off the field on the previous possession. Billy Napier is pointing at a spot on the sideline. He thinks he stepped out. Let's see. Man, I don't know. That left foot, maybe? Uh, I... The previous play is under further review. I mean, there's a chance that he steps out three or four times, but it looks to me, I mean, if his heel doesn't come down. That's what I was going to say. Heel doesn't come down there. Maybe there. Doesn't come down there. I... He was definitely tight roping it. That first right step, I say no. Man, I don't know. But when you look on first down in this game for Spencer Rattler, he's just unconscious. He's, he, ha he hasn't thrown an incomplete. He's six for six, over 100 yards, a touchdown. 160 of their 182 has all come on first downs. And before this game, it was nothing but Xavier Leggett. He's found five different receivers already in this game, but this would be the biggest offensive play yet, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, it would be huge, and that's after Xavier Leggett came out after South Carolina's last offensive drive, right? He was actually hobbling around a little bit on the sideline, but Shane Beamer walked over to him, said, hey, man, you good? He nodded, immediately went over to Spencer. They put their heads together, continued to talk, and obviously he looks okay out there, but something worth keeping an eye on, guys. When it comes to Xavier Leggett, we've talked about this breakout season, but everyone here saw it coming. Shane Beamer loves to tell the story about over the summer, Friday night at 10 o'clock, he gets a call from Xavier. He's going, oh no, usually this timing means something bad's happened, right? Xavier wanted him to get on the phone with the security guard outside of the facility so he could go in and get some, some extra work in on a Friday night. Pretty impressive uh, to be there rather than five points. After further review, the ball carrier stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line, not the 32. It'll be first down, South Carolina. So, it's a 41-yard catch instead of a 43-yard catch for the fifth-year senior from Mullen, South Carolina. And to Alyssa's point, in Leggett's first 40 games in college, he caught 35 balls. In his last six, he's caught 41. <laughs> you got to pick your spots, man. You got to show up when you're needed most. And he certainly has been. It's been very... Leggett-centric, I mean, one of the best receivers, put together among the best performances of anybody this season. Mario Anderson taking on defenders, flags are down. It would be a first down run. Man, he is physical though. He took a huge shot and kept going. Holding, offense number 51, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's the left tackle, Tree Babaladay. Hands outside, as soon as the bat goes out, it's an easy holding call. It's twice we've seen that. The finish, though, is just, like, I'm just outstanding. I mean, he took a shot right there near the line of scrimmage. He was 170 pounds. He doesn't look it. Rattler. Takes on defenders again, down to the 36 near the original line of scrimmage Shamar James the sophomore from Mobile Alabama on the tackle naturally another great Mobilian the guy able to get in there and knock down Rattler a guy coming into this game had almost 180 yards on scrambles not a lot of QB design run in this offense but Rattler can hurt you if he doesn't have options downfield almost getting back to that original line on second and 12 it's Anderson again down to the 30-yard line where it'll set up a third down as Kelby Collins comes in to make the stop. Almost is a nice hole there on the left side. Good job by the Gator defensive front, closing it up around Anderson. He's every bit of 210. Last time they had a third this distance to go, it was an early snap. The Gators got the Carolina center to flinch. Spencer, the pocket's breaking down. 
gets out of there, throws, first down, inside the 20 to Omega Blake. It's what makes him so dangerous. We're talking to the Florida coaches, and they mentioned, you know, he doesn't really keep it alive to run. He will, as we just saw a moment ago. But he scrambles, keeps his eyes downfield. He was dead right. I mean, they were all around him. Somehow he kept his feet alive. How about Rattler under center now on this first down? Florida's going to others in. Yeah, it's the official timeout. Yeah, chain issue. You. Well, we know how Coach Beamer feels about the chain crew. They had a little bit of an issue in that first game against the Tar Heels and Bank of America Stadium getting back out of the locker room. This time they were, looked like they were hung up on something on the far sideline, but South Carolina was quick over the ball. Rattler under center, under center at least to start again. Cox 2-2 two and two in the red zone, two touchdowns. Joyner nothing. Jalen Kimber on the tackle. Transfer from Georgia. Battled shoulder issues in Athens, but has been a big-time contributor in Gainesville. Kind of shot off the edge. Nobody accounting for him in the blocking scheme. Good job that time. Something that Florida has done a couple of times around that near hash. They'll send that boundary corner and run support. Second and ten, Rattler underneath throw to Anderson. No one covered him, and he hurdles into the end zone. just gets it back out to him. He was unaccounted for, just got lost in coverage all by himself. And I'll tell you what the Gator defense has learned. This guy's physical. You come in there, you're trying to tackle low. Gator says, fine, I'll just hop over. You. you know, everyone wonders what kind of athleticism does a Division II transfer have that's now a starting tailback in the SEC? Hey, Edwin Moses, eat your heart out. Tie game in Columbia. The backup left guard is starting at left guard. The starting left guard is starting at center. The starting center is starting at right tackle. <laughs> and South Carolina's offense has looked outstanding for Spencer Rattler so far. Graham Mertz has been great, too. Hey, think about this. A couple of big shots, right? What got Florida down there? Big shot downfield. And then South Carolina came right back out and answered. The 41 yarder to Xavier Leggett after review brought it back a little bit. Man, they've just been throwing some haymakers. Both these offenses, really, South Carolina punted, but it was only because of that errant snap, kind of an early snap. Otherwise, these offenses have just been going up and down the field on one another. Mertz wants to go back to the air, but he's facing pressure all over him was Jatias Gear. Transfer from Syracuse who grew up in Anderson, South Carolina. The guy that the coaches were talking about, we need to get him out there, we need to get him healthy. That time was able to disrupt, trying to move the pocket once again, not dissimilar to that deep shot that Florida was able to hit earlier, and that time just had to burn it so that you, you lose yardage. Mertz, off his back foot, throws, Pearsall can't make the catch. He had Eamon Worry on him. A lot of contact, Pearsall saying, man, you get a flag come out on that one. I mean, a lot of contact. Surprised, especially given the Eamon Worry his hands on the receiver did not play the ball regardless a big third down that incompletion think about that trying to move the pocket here gets the pressure then you get an incompletion to force a third and obvious and the crowd's in it Mertz another good 
football and a completion for a first to Marcus Burke. Hertz has been outstanding on third down, but he's hobbling a bit here. South Carolina show pressure and bail at the snap. He came in, I, I, he shot in low, right as Mertz was getting rid of it from Strawn. Hobbled him a little bit. Mertz took some shots last week from Vanderbilt as well. He popped in that game. Four big third down throws for Mertz today. And back to the ground. It's Montrell Johnson. Tackled by DQ Smith. Johnson, of course, played for Coach Napier for the Ragin' Cajuns of Louisiana. Came over to the Gators last year and has been just as good in the SEC as he was in the Sun Belt. Went over 2,000 career rushing yards last week. The ground game. You know, the Gators got away from it a little bit. Took a little bit of pressure off the quarterback in the passing game. On second and five. Mertz under pressure. Got rid of it. And... Johnson straddles the sideline, but he does step out of bounds at the 47. Jordan Strawn was all over Mertz again. The Gators are they're setting the screen up. The problem is sometimes, especially with the offensive linemen, you do have to protect for at least that one beat, that one half second, so that your quarterback's not drifting for his life trying to buy enough time to dump it off. Instead, Gamecock defensive front were all over it. Hertz has been amazing on third and ten. This should be a piece of cake, right? Third and two. <laughs> he should have about an eight-yard margin based on what he's shown so far in this game. And no! Stopped in the backfield. Jatias Gear tackle for loss. Debo Williams in there as well. Just nowhere to go right now. And to me, it was Tonka Hemingway that kind of set that up. It forced the running back to stop his feet in the backfield on a short yardage play. Gamecocks are going to call a timeout. Basketball season right around the corner. SEC Network once again the home for the annual basketball media days. Wednesday for the women, Thursday for the men, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Starting both days, SEC Now team having each team's press conference interviews with coaches and players along with team previews and breakdowns. Coverage will continue during the Paul Feinbaum show at 3 Eastern, so you know Alyssa will be busy with all of that this week as basketball is back, if you can believe that. South Carolina does have one timeout left, and they get the ball first to start the second half. Yeah, the way this game is gone, you got to think, you know, so obviously you want to move the football, but you also want to end this game with a possession. Florida too much. Big stop by the defense, though. Now only the second punt in this first half. Jeremy Crawshaw for the first time today. Good punt. Bounces at the 12. It takes a South Carolina bounce up to the 21-yard line. We mentioned the big news today, the change up front for the Gamecocks. All new positions, basically. We got a couple of guys that are the same, and the reason they wanted to do it were for plays like that one. Get the run game going. Give your quarterback and Spencer Rattler some room to work. That time, Big Nick Harbour able to come back for it, and then Juju McDowell virtually untouched into the end zone. Gap scheme runs. Getting those defensive linemen forced off the line of scrimmage. And the big change was Trey Jones at left guard. And it's Anderson again, bulldozing his way ahead to the 26. And again, Gamecocks have one timeout left. Mario going over 60 yards rushing here in this first half. Just such a physical runner. I mean, the physical finishes to his runs ran right over Derek Wingo. They'll run it again. And Anderson right near a first down. And since that ball was snapped, prior to two minutes left in the half. And it finishes with 159. The clock will stop as they move the chains. Now Rattler back to the air. That is his first incompletion of the game. 
as he was pressured by Kelby Collins. Well, between that and the fact that South Carolina has now eclipsed their season average for rushing in a game already here in the first half. The first incompletion by Spencer Rattler. Shots hit downfield. Time to throw. The radical change to this South Carolina offensive front has worked so far. On second and 10, Rattler goes underneath to Anderson, and Anderson is cut down quickly by Wingo. He was kind of losing his footing a little bit. He come out. After that one, and DeCarry and Joyner rather checks in. And the Gators now will call a timeout. Their first of the half. If they can get off the field quickly, then they'll want to try to steal some points. You think, Taylor, coming into this game, both of these offenses had kind of similar difficulties. Offensive front needed to solidify. They need to provide time for these quarterbacks run the football Austin Armstrong over there the young DC for Florida is trying to get his unit fired up he knows that they need to get a stop right here get the ball back for his offense Anderson might be a little bit nicked up as he heads into the tent nine carries for 67 yards for Mario in his first half against Billy Napier and the aforementioned Austin Armstrong's Gator defense, the 30-year-old first-year defensive coordinator that played Division III football at Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama. He's made his way through the University of Louisiana, Georgia, Southern Miss to make it to Florida. Rattler's in trouble. He's going down back at the 25. Prince, Princely Uman Mielin with the sack. And Florida will call another timeout with 1.31 to go. Coming out of that break, and you can see the Gators. Boy, Brashawn Lee a little bit nicked up. Look at this alignment. Now, there looks like there's some confusion. See the Gators talking, but who's over here? It was a really odd alignment pre-snap. Didn't matter. Mommy Ellen wins right now. Babale, who just couldn't get out there. Zuman Mielin's 11th career sack. He's the one constant, you know, part of the problem for Florida is they have all these freshmen that are learning on the fly, trying to play in a hostile environment. Zuman Mielin has been there for four years. He's seen a lot of change in Gainesville. That was the stop the Gators were seeking right there. Called that timeout, get a stop on third down. Ty Kroger's second punt, this off the oh. side of his foot. And he goes into the Gator bench, and that's exactly what Florida wants, is they'll have good field position at the 45-yard line. It's just a 27-yard punt. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the mighty sound of the Southeast on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Peter, Chris, and Keo, or excuse me, Peter, Chris, and Benjamin Watson are in the studio. Kroger just hammered the previous punt. Could not come at a worse time. Now, for a great field position near midfield for the Gators. The timeout in their pocket. So it keeps that middle of the field still available. Plenty of time on this possession. And one timeout and a great kicker. Mertz to Pearsall. What a catch! Perfect in the bread basket, out of bounds at the 29, 26 more. How did he track this ball? He was looking for it over his inside shoulder. He takes five steps. He's looking up and back to try to find this. Unbelievable catch by Pearsall. Second only to the one at Charlotte. Mertz, again, this one's a wounded duck, and it's picked off. There's a flag that comes in. No, it's dropped. The last second there by Fortune. Brian Thomas hit Mertz as he tried to get rid of that ball. Pass interference, defense number three. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. 
Beamer wants the officials to talk about this being uncatchable. Uh, there's no doubt he was early. Changes everything. We saw it earlier. There was some contact earlier, no call. That time, definitely a call. The ball came out so poorly out of Mertz's hands that the Be Beamer might have a case. Because it was fluttering from the get-go. I gotta look at it. First and 10. Inside the 15. Mertz steps up, goes down, and throws it at Pearsall's feet. Yeah. Everybody in the stadium was wanting to act like it was a, somehow it's a live ball. He was clearly throwing it. Pearsall was... Moving on the field as the runner was down. Second down. That was the last play. Yeah, definitely not tip. Just a... And we'll get to that incompletion in just a moment. It's second down. And now Mertz throws underneath. Caught by ETN. Ford will just let that clock run a bit. They do have one timeout left. Here was the play before that. Pocket collapsing, and Mertz was just kind of tripped up. They're saying he was down before he attempted that pass. And in the stadium, wanted it to be a fumble somehow in the return. Odd sequence of events, to say the least. So he get the Kroger punt off the side of his foot, gifting the Gators with excellent field position here. The Gamecocks defense able to affect Mertz. A couple of passes now, and a near pick. P.I. gets him down there, no touch, no tip on that football. So he gets the Gators down here, big third down, with 36 seconds left to play. You get a first down, stop the clock even. So you can't get that first and afford yourself time to step up and run a play, not just run up the clock. So Florida from South Carolina's 14-yard line. One out of timeouts on a third and 10. And movement on the right side. Wow. That's Lindell Hudson. Third down. Hudson's been starting at left tackle. He's over at right tackle. Splitting time with Damian George over there. You can see, and Hudson, looks like Hudson's saying the defense was clapping. That's why, he was way early. We saw that disconcerting signals. That was called a couple of times last week. To the 10 goes Wilson as he tried to sneak out of there. And remember, Florida is out of timeouts here as they try to attempt this field goal on fourth down. 28 yard attempt for Smack. Crawshaw has time to take this snap from Rocco Underwood, gets it down after a bad snap, and Smack kicks it through with three seconds to go in the half. They had it set up. They knew if you're short on that third down, they had that fire drill. You get that field goal unit, they're ready. They're sitting on go. Well executed there towards the end. A little false start. That was a big penalty. Came in handy for South Carolina to back him up those five yards. What a difference this guy's been. 10 for 10, kicking field goals and perfect kicking extra points as well. 
And you see Wilson, as he made the catch, you realize you're out of timeouts. Get on the field as quickly as you can. Yeah. You see Austin Barber, he's in there like, look, look, we're short, we're short. Get off if you're not on the extra point field goal. So outside of that false start, it really negated any opportunity really to get a conversion there. If they got the first down on third down right there, the clock stops, you got a chance to run a player or two. The last thing the Gators want to do is let Xavier Leggett no. get his hands on this one. Instead, it's fielded by an up back, and there'll be two seconds to go in the half. Think about the big plays in this game. There have been some shots that have been hit downfield. We have challenged both of these secondaries. Pearsall with the amazing catch over his head. The Harbor with the deep shot, again with a long catch. Nine plays of 20 plus, five by Florida, four by South Carolina. Both of these offenses coming alive. It's a heck of a first half. Man. Gators taking a three point cushion to the locker room. Spencer Rattler, outstanding, 11 for 12. Mertz has thrown more incompletions today than he typically has so far this year, but the yardage is up. A couple of great deep balls that you talked about. 228 yards passing, and Rattler has been sensational all year long, and that might be the best half he's played through six games. There's Mertz taking a seat because Spencer Rattler and the Gamecocks will get it first in the second half. And the Gamecocks will get it at the 25. Well, he came out hot, did Spencer Rattler, and it has been able to allow South Carolina to counter punch all game long. Get a shot downfield to Nick Harbor. See the time that he's been afforded. That time was shallow in the pocket. Was able to break loose. Find Blake on a third down conversion. He's just been clutch. All season long, he's had to find ways to stay alive. Hadn't been pressed into doing that as much this game. That is Mario Anderson. We watched him go into the tenth at the end of the first half, but he's out there. He gets six more yards. Now 10 carries for 73 in the game for the transfer from Newberry College. Kind of working that left knee still a little bit. Fake to him, fake the handoff. Now they throw. And up and getting a first down is Trey Knox. Knox has been outstanding in this game. Career high four catches, at least for the Gamecocks, that is. Setting up this first down play. They hit Knox on a play action that time. And they were faking what was going to be another gap scheme run. They were pulled their right guard. Pick up the blitz. And they have to throw it into the bench. Let's go down to Alyssa. Guys, I caught up with Florida head coach Billy Napier coming out of the half. I asked him, what do you want to see more of here in the second half? He said, well, defensively, I want to see our guys staying on the same page. No mental errors. Had a few of those in the first half. He said, offensively, we only punted once, so continuing some of that momentum. He said, the energy in the locker room at halftime was great. He raved about it. He gestured over to his team, and he said, you know what you need to know about these guys? They're a bunch of fighters. Meanwhile, Alyssa, Miguel Mitchell is down on the field with an injury. He missed last week's game due to injury, and they have moved him over near the sideline. That's the South Carolina sideline. That's not insignificant. As you mentioned, he missed last week. Florida started two true freshmen at safety versus Vanderbilt. Bryce Thornton was out there. Jordan Castile. Good to see Mitchell hop up after that. A, we talked about Nick Harbor. That's who Spencer Rattler was looking to get the ball to. It was well covered. Mitchell got the short end of the stick at the end of that play. Yeah, true freshman all over the field 
for Florida, especially on defense and especially in their secondary. Austin Armstrong, their defensive coordinator, was saying some of these guys aren't old enough to vote. Well, they're lined up ready to play, and Mitchell's still very slowly walking off the field. He was still on the numbers. South Carolina was ready to snap the ball. Second and ten, Anderson. Gets a couple. Game tackled by Shamar James and friends. I'll tell you, Taylor, the more I see of this Anderson kid, the better he looks. I mean, he had one heck of that was a great cut. Just to push it upfield to pick up the two yards. And we've seen him. He runs physically through the line of scrimmage and at the end of runs. Gamecox just one of three on third down today. Rattler throws, caught in the Gator territory by Leggett. That was a tough catch, well defended for 13 yards. Really nice pickup. Look at this protection. That's a clean pocket. You got no pressure in your face. And time to deliver a strike to your favorite target, Xavier Leggett. Leggett, a little bit. Coming out of that break at the top of his route, lost his balance. We'll fight through it. Three catches, 62 yards for Leggett today. Pre-snap movement. False start. False start. Offense, number 17. Never got set. Five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, whenever you see a wide receiver false start, especially on a first down play, it's more likely going to be a shot. You're at midfield, it's first down, load up on. They've been great passing all game long. Be willing to bet that play would have been a shot downfield to number 17. Fake to McDowell, off the back foot, throws it up one-on-one, -on -one, like get. They said, hey, he had the false start. I bet they just said, look, call it and run it. Same thing we were going to do. Pressure in his face. Rattler does a great job. Just hang it up there. That's your big, long track star. Speedster out there and Leggett go up there and make a play for it. 42 yards. Anderson goes to the ground and gets down to the six. You're right, Stitch. Chris McClellan all over Rattler as he makes the throw. And then Jalen Kimber, you thought had Leggett covered up. Man, that ball hung up in the air forever. I mean, the hang time was tremendous. On the six, Rattler underneath. And at the five, Knox, great tackle made by Kimber. Yeah, I mean, great job by Kimber coming up. Knox, as soon as he reeled that in, had Kimber all over his legs. Another explosive play. We've seen a number of them in this game. Both offenses able to push the ball downfield to their receivers. Rattler has time. Steps up in a muddy pocket and steps into some Gators. Back near the nine, Kelby Collins was waiting for him. At that time, he wanted Leggett right now. He was looking, working to the right side of the formation. Didn't see what he wanted. Wow. You know, great job by the Gator defense to force this field goal attempt. You see pressure late. He's trying to scramble up. That's where those scramble yards come is through the middle of the pocket, inside, not outside. Instead, it's a couple of Gators waiting on him. Well, we told you how great Trey Smack has been. Mitch Jeter from 27 yards. He has never missed a kick inside 50. Tie game. 24 apiece with 10.26 to go. Here at five points in Columbia. It's a great rivalry between two old SEC foes that have been playing every year for the past 30 plus years. Gator fans here. Yeah, I saw quite a few Gator fans swimming around those cockabooses. 
Graham Mertz sure likes playing in Columbia. Set a record for passing yards as a Gator and a half. Well, he starts, he's so, such an efficient passer. I mean, the guy all season long has been really good with his decision making, but this is the one who kind of uncorked that downfield passing game to Jackson. Didn't stop there. Pearsall tracking that one down. Just a remarkable play over the shoulder. Able to stretch that South Carolina secondary. The Gators gave up a big play defensively, but that stopped the force of field goal to knock things up. Toss goes to Eugene Wilson. And Wilson, a true freshman, starting at tailback in the second half, gets nine yards. They use him every which way, don't they? We saw him line him up in the backfield. An earlier snap there in the first half, and just swung it out there to him, allowed Montreal Johnson to be a lead blocker, and this time just a toss into the boundary and let him get downhill. Stone Blanton comes off the field after making the tackle. Comes out of the game. Grayson Howard, the true freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, comes in. He shows incredibly thin, both these teams at linebacker. On second and one, Mertz has a menu to choose from, and it's somehow it's Wilson getting free all the way down into Gamecock territory at the 36. Nine on first down, 30 on second. All game long. This is what it's been like, really, for both teams. You see Wilson all by himself near the boundary. They went to South Carolina Gamecock in the zip code. Easy run after catch. And now Wilson will line up at quarterback. And a little razzle-dazzle. Mertz has to throw it into the Gator bench. Debo Williams blew up that play. And let's see if they talk about this, if that ball went past the line of scrimmage. It was Debo Williams, it of course. Yeah, it came out. wasn't falling for any of that. Great job of getting up field quickly. A little too much on that one. A slow developing play. Great job by Williams of staying at home. The penalty and lose the down. Big loss all the way back. Outside the 45 at the 47-yard line on this second down. Mertz facing pressure, dumps it off to Wilson. Wilson gets dinged immediately by O'Donnell Fortune. What a play by Fortune. Able to close right now. They're just trying to get some of that yardage back. Pressure almost immediately by Elijah Davis. He won inside. Azuka. Had a hard time handling him in protection. Fortune able to rally up. On third and 21, Mertz throws underneath. And a catch made by Johnson, and he gets down near the 36 near the original line of scrimmage, and what does Coach Napier do here? See, he said, he says, well, there for a second, it looked as if he was subbing in Hayden Hanson. Well, Smack made a 54-yarder against the Charlotte 49ers, and this, too, would be a 54-yarder. South Carolina on an earlier attempt. They were able to sneak through the line. And he still hasn't missed one. Wow, what a kick. 11 for 11 this season, four for four in this game. And the Gators are back on top. 
mentions it right here. Uh, go ahead, Snitch. I, it's, it's try our new, some new invention. I, I just want to say we should have a warning sign on the screen right now because I don't know what's about to happen next. You think pretty good? It's going to be your turn to talk now. It's a sweet and salty combo. Really good. And it's got bacon on top of it. Really good for you. Fantastic for you. We checked with the, there's a cardiologist up here near the booth. <laughs> He's standing by just in case. Alyssa, you've been talking about this for weeks. I've been preparing for this my entire life. You guys see that thing? How was it, Stinch? Way, it was way above my expectations. This is, yeah, it's amazing. Sweet and salty, right? It's interesting. All right. That's for sure. That's, it's their new invention, though. Now I'm making a mess down here. I love State Fair Innovations. Brand new donut dog. Meanwhile, back to the game. And Mario Anderson is going to lose a yard there on first down as Williams comes up in Searcy to make the tackle. Fair food is great. There's no doubt about it. You got to do it annually. If you did it more often than that, it can get dangerous. Yeah. Why not make it back to the fair? <laughs> Which is why we went to Hall's Chop House here in Columbia with the Queen of Columbia, Miss Lang, last night. Rattler running around trying to find somewhere to throw it to, and he overthrows Blake, who was covered up on the play. Good coverage by Jalen Kimbert. It's third and 11. I mean, it's right next to the stadium. Over 150 years ago, 400,000 visitors each year. And the donut, this donut dog that we just ate is the new food this year. Oh, the Long John Donut. Okay. That was the bun. Golly, man. Pushing the frontiers of donuts. On third and 11, Rattler is going to try to run for it. He's going to have to make a move right at the line. And they're going to mark him short. That's Miguel cool. Mitchell, who's back on the field, was there with him stride for stride, fourth down. That's twice now where we've seen Rattler scramble. They're staying out there. On a fourth and one from their own 34. They got stopped twice. Last time out versus Tennessee on fourth and one. And there's movement on South Carolina's offensive line as Rattler tried to create movement on Florida's side. Yeah, they like Trey Jones, Babel a day. Ball start, offense number 72, five yard penalty, fourth down. And more than likely, that play, no play is going to get run right there. You line up, send a guy in motion. Watch the left side. Yeah, you see Trey Jones just kind of pop up a little bit there. Frustrated with himself. That swap, though, has definitely ignited the Gamecock rushing attack, at least thus far. Kroger, two punts. One that almost went 60 yards and another that was short of 30 yards. This one much better. Fielded by Pearsall at the 18. Tackled at the 22. A 53-yard punt on a beautiful Saturday night in Florida, leading 27-24. Both offenses have looked terrific today. Graham Mertz, a quarterback for the Gators, Hands off on the end around to Wilson, makes a couple of people miss. They had him trapped for a loss. Instead, it's a first down run up to the 34. Missed tackles on that one. Boy, missed opportunities. The reverse, chance to get him down in the backfield. Man, Marcellus Dial's not going to want to see that play in film. Chance to get him two shots, really. Stone Blanton has to be helped off the field. He was injured on the last drive, and he's having issues again. The sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi, has put on a ton of muscle this year. 
We just saw that Tennessee Texas A&M highlight Mizzou and Kentucky playing tonight Georgia and Vandy already played today and South Carolina and Florida playing as we speak the Gators win this game stench suddenly that game in Jacksonville in two weeks carries a lot more intrigue than usual it's always a great rivalry game but Florida's got a path to Atlanta if they can win this one and then knock off the dogs in two weeks it's true I mean, look at the way it lays out. It's right there in front of them still. Obviously, this one being a pivotal game, division game. Of course, South Carolina looking to right the ship here at home. Turn around, hand it to ETN. ETN makes dial fortune miss and steps out of bounds near the 40-yard line where DQ Smith pushes him out. Six-yard gain for the sophomore from Jennings, Louisiana. Does a great job of keeping this play alive. What a stiff arm. Get off me. Picks up another seven yards or so. Otherwise, that could have been a negligible, maybe even a loss. And Fortune had to come off the field after that stiff arm, too, where South Carolina's thin a quarterback, a cornerback. And you got Stone Blanton on the sidelines as well. Second and four, Mertz wants to go back to work. Under pressure and gets crushed by Jordan Strawn. He has 16 and a half career sacks. Most of them came at Georgia State. So here's Strawn right here on the near side. And it was kind of a meet me at the quarterback. Is he and Elijah Davis both yeah, actually, it was Tyreek Johnson that was able to get loose. Third and 14, Mertz throws incomplete. A little too high for Arliss Boardingham with DQ Smith in coverage. And the Gators are forced to punt. So had, to, had to climb up in the pocket. And that ball just sailed on it. And Boardingham, really fortunate, just got enough on this ball. That ball would have sailed right into DQ Smith's arms. And instead, Boardingham got just enough for that ball to flutter back down. And you can see Billy Napier is frustrated right there. Making a yardage play to send it back. Australian punter Jeremy Crawshaw got a bad bounce on his first punt. This one is fielded at the 27 by Eddie Lewis. Coming up next, Brady Cook and Mizzou in Lexington to take on Devin Leary and number 24 Kentucky SEC Saturday night matchup. Cats licking their wounds after what happened to them in Athens last week. Ray Davis has been sensational. Transfer from Vanderbilt, gashed the Gators a couple of weeks ago. And Mizzou lost that wild affair to LSU last Saturday in Como for their first loss of the season. Should be a fun one tonight. Mizzou team's been a surprise this season. Rattler, play action, trying to get free from Gators and throws into the South Carolina bench. He was trying to get it to Marion Brown. But Rattler never could set his feet with all the pressure he was facing from the Gators. All of a sudden, right here in the second half, these offensive fronts held up relatively well in the first half. Starting to leak. The pressure's starting to get to both these quarterbacks, affecting these throws. On second and 10, it's Joyner. He runs ahead to the 32-yard line where James, the leading tackler for Florida, makes another tackle. Another third down for the Gamecocks and offensive coordinator Dowell Loggins, who has been a calm, steady influence this season on his quarterback, Spencer Rattler. Came over from Arkansas, 16 years in the NFL. What is he like on a third and six? Rattler, he likes him. Burke knocks and knocks, makes the catch. 
right at the first down marker to move the chains. We mentioned Knox last week. Man, he had a big game, seven catches versus UT. He's a good compliment to Xavier Leggett. Six catches for 30 yards. Graduate player, went over 100 career catches today. Most of those coming in Arkansas. Anderson gets licked in the backfield. And he'll lose half a yard, Alyssa. It's interesting, guys, to hear Spencer Rattler and Dell Loggins talk about what they call the partnership. They have so much communication throughout the week, and Spencer said they're pretty much always on the same page as far as the type of plays they want to run, what they want to install from week to week. Loggins told us that sometimes he would intentionally call something in practice he knew Spencer wouldn't like to force him to say, no, let's run this instead. Second and 11. Rattler, the pocket's breaking down, steps up, runs again, runs for a first down, outruns some Gators down near the 35. Bryce Thornton finally got him on the ground, but Spencer gained 26 yards. He's got his eyes downfield, only a four-man rush, but gets pushed up in the pocket, and there was no one there. Great opportunity we talk about when a quarterback flushes. If he can flush up and through the pocket, there's your scramble opportunity. To add great... to, sorry, Stitch, to add to what Alyssa was saying about the partnership with Loggins. Loggins knows so many guys around the NFL as Anderson runs inside the 30, out of bounds inside the 25. Smart James tackles him out. Another good run for the Division II transfer. Should get downhill. This guy was a walk-on, a lower division team, and he is playing lights out in this football game. Try him again. He gets nothing. As Jack Pyburn was right at the point of attack, coming up there to make the tackle and set up second down. Back to Rattler for a moment. Stench and Loggins. Oh. Loggins knows everybody in the NFL. And you put all the tape that Rattler has shown you this year together, you have to think NFL scouts are going to want to draft this guy. There's a ton of great quarterbacks coming out next year, including Spencer Rattler. You see the numbers, 220 yards, two touches. On second and 11, he throws back shoulder over Blake's head. And Marshall is down there, stride for stride with Blake. Third down. You can see Rattler, he's saying, man, go. Put you all the way to the corner right here. He was looking over his inside shoulder, initially slowed him down a little bit. Blake had to step up. No juice wells. They've been without him since early that game versus Georgia. We talk about Knox, a tight end. But the get is the outside threat. And then there's other guys, you know, Nick Harbour. Otherwise, you just there's not a lot of threat out there and that time trying to get it to Blake. What does Spencer like on a third and 11? He's got time and he throws again and he likes Knox for another first down. First and goal at the three. We talk about Knox, I mean the guys Big bodied receiver that they say, let's play him at more of a tight end spot. 6'6, 240. Boy, he's playing big today again. Gamecocks on the doorstep as the Gators have the lead going to the fourth. 27 24. Gators take the lead going to the fourth, but the Gamecocks will snap this football from the floor to three right in front of that raucous student section on the 10th play of the drive. Rattler rolls, Juju McDowell again, touchdown.
here. Spencer Rattler was 25 for 27 against Furman, 18 for 20 against Mississippi State. With all due respect, those teams aren't as good as Florida. He's 18 for 23 today, 243 yards, and just threw his third touchdown. Juju McDowell just able to outflank Castile, whose eyes were inside. True freshman at safety down there in the red zone. Lots happening. All you need is a step. How about Juju McDowell in the end zone twice now? One time running, one time in the air. And the third downs, it's a great point. Throughout this game, have been key. Graham Mertz was clutch earlier. This drive, able to get that conversion to Trey Knox. Both these head coaches, they knew coming into this thing it would be a battle. We talked about it in recent years. And it has certainly lived up to the bill. Washington up 11 on Oregon, A&M and Tennessee and a great one in Knoxville where the balls have a slight advantage at the moment. Gamecocks just jumped back on top, 31-27. And Florida will get it at the 25 just a moment ago. Alyssa Lang with head coach Billy Napier. Coach, what do you need to see from your team to close this one out? Yeah, we need to get off the field on third down, you know. Quarterback has been able to escape, extend, and create plays with his feet. We tackle a little bit better in the second half, but it's been about third down. And then, obviously, we had a negative play. We got sacked there. Seven man for Texas. So, look, it's a fourth quarter game. This is what we expected. Let's go play some football. Thanks, coach. All right, thank you. Couldn't have said it any better. First and 10 for Mertz at South Carolina's 25. He's moved the day all, he's moved the ball all day on this Gamecock defense. And he loads up and throws a one on one ball to Burke. And they're going to throw the flag. It's going to be on Marcellus Dial. Right in front of Shane Beamer. Pass interference, defense number six. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Eight penalties now on the Gamecocks today, Stench. One on one ball all the way, and you see Dial all into it. Burke. You've seen some physical downs earlier, but that's twice now Gamecocks have been called for pass interference down the field. You see the Gators that time, you know, Graham Burst just looked out there, saw the one-on-one -on -one matchup and liked it. Easily looked like it was going to be a zone run to the left. He just stood up and threw it out there. And now Mertz from the 40. Turns and hands to Johnson. Haven't called his name much since the first quarter, but he breaks free into Gamecocks territory. Picks up 20. This is what we're talking about is that, you know, Florida kind of got away from the run game there for a while. That pretty clean, although Elijah Davis looked like he had a shot. Johnson in the backfield just couldn't get him on the ground. Seven carries for Johnson and for ETN in this game. Is Johnson patiently waiting for blocks and another first down just past the 30 where Kilgore makes the tackle? Yeah, Debo Samuel. I mean, Debo Williams, <laughs> forgive me. He's up there. He's, he makes penetration right now. Watch number zero. He's in the backfield. It's like he lost track of where the runner was. Yeah, Pearsall all faking the ball to him, maybe yep. caught his eye. And they talked about that, did the South Carolina coaches. There's a lot of opposite direction, a lot of misdirection in the backfield for the Gators. Johnson tackled for a loss. Debo wasn't fooled that time. He shot the A gap just like he did on the earlier down. This time, though, he knew who ended up, who was going to end up with the football. So watch him. Here's Samuel. And what he's going to do is just going to shoot up field. Does a great job of getting penetration. See that? Great job diagnosing. See tackles. Three and a half of them for loss. He had 14 against the Tar Heels to start the season. I'm sure Mr. Debo Samuel is watching his game cocks. That's right. They've said. Undefeated 49ers. He 
Mertz slings it out of there. Pearsall can't wiggle free. DQ Smith tackles him at the 25. You know, South Carolina was trying to bring pressure. They said they were going to be more aggressive. Eamon Worry once again coming on the blitz. And it was well picked up in the protection. Mertz able to just get that completion. As you mentioned, that Pearsall just couldn't wiggle free. And you see the conversions. Man, well, lights out in the first half, second half. The Gamecock defense doing a much better job of getting off the field. South Carolina has forced four Trey Smack field goals. Trying to do it again on a third and five. Play clock running out, and Billy Napier is going to have to call timeout. Timeout. 12 minutes left in the game. Billy is a treat to talk to in the coaches' meetings. Is so level-headed, perfect guy to take you through a rebuild, a transition. Alyssa was talking earlier about how on the road he's trying to figure out how he gets his team to play better, to get more sleep. He said, though, that this team, team number two, in his second year stitch, is more stable with no distractions. They try, they fail, they learn, they adjust, they grow, and repeat. That's so, the way you build a program. That's how you get better. Down to Alyssa for more. They sort of have similar emotions on game day, too, guys. I mean, sitting here watching Graham Mertz on the sideline after South Carolina scored that go-ahead touchdown, he's bobbing his head to Sandstorm. He's going around to all of his receivers, chatting with Coach Napier. Every time he comes to the sideline, it's maybe the calmest quarterback play caller relationship I've ever seen. He talked to me this week about how much he embraces wanting to win football games, but just going out there and having fun, and the two of them embody that for sure. See what they like on a third and five from the Gamecocks 25. There's Ricky Pearsall right there. Got that kind of bunch at the top of the formation. Mertz steps into trouble and is down at the 30. Tonka Hemingway. It looked like that's who he wanted. He wanted Pearsall on the corner route. He just didn't have time to get it off. The bottom of his drop, he gets pressured up. Brian Thomas forced him up in the pocket. Just beat around that left edge. Force Mertz to climb the pocket, and there was nowhere to go. Tonka Hemingway having a heck of a game. Trey Smack, the thirds, having a heck of a game to cut it to one from 48 yards. And it's blocked! Partially blocked, and that is Smack's first miss. We haven't seen much Beamer ball yet this year. There it is. Gamecocks up four with the football. We welcome you back to SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Gamecocks lead the Gators 31-27 after Tyreek Johnson blocked Trey Smack's field goal. South Carolina has a four-point lead and the ball from their own 30. And a handoff to Anderson. Mario squirts out of there and picks up five on first down, make it six. Well, I was talking about, you know, they were getting through. They didn't block the previous one. Tyreek Johnson just slides right through there. Looks like it was between Barber and Damian George. We talk about Beamer ball. You know, a couple of these field goals earlier where it looked like the Gamecocks were getting close. Anderson met immediately by Taraja Mitchell. And it's third down. A couple of runs early. You mentioned there was a perfect description. You know, Anderson just kind of squirting through there. He's, we were down there on the field earlier. You know, he's a guy that his lowers, his lower body is stacked up. For, uh, he's not a big long runner, that's for sure. A low center of gravity. He's 95 yards rushing, but he's leaving the backfield on a third and two. 
Rattler looked over there, now throws, middle of the field, wide open, Omega Blake. Inside the 40, down to the 38. 24-yard completion. A great job by Rattler. He just manages the pocket so well. Yeah, he's probably conditioned for it. At that time, a great job on pressuring by Shamar James. Rattler just kind of slid to his right, delivers a strike. Blake only had one career catch before the season, but Rattler's been looking for him with Juice Wells injured. Keeps it this time. And gets hit down at the 33-yard line. A lot of quarterbacks across the country give themselves up. Rattler doesn't like to do it. I think that time he, he got up kind of, I think he thought he slid. I almost think he intended to. You don't see this a lot in their offense. Yeah, what well, he's watching him get up. He's thinking, hey, man, I shouldn't have gotten hit, but that wasn't much of a slide. He kind of turtled. <laughs> Five-yard gain. Fake to McDowell. Then they throw. And inside the 20, Joshua Simon gets free. Touchdown. Simon had 15 touchdowns for Western Kentucky. That's his first as a Gamecock, and Shane Beamer's loving it. Jordan Castile's down there. He's the safety that came up, so it's a gap scheme. They fake. What looks like they're trying to get a blocker across. No, he's going to be a receiver. Wow, Simon just runs right through the tackle. This tackles on the road. Boy, is that play. This Florida Gator defense, as you see Castile, able to leave the field under his own power. Good to see that. Not good to see Simon able to just run through that tackle. The students. That's what? kind of like what the Phillies were doing to the Braves the other night with the uh, too, too soon. The too soon chop. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Dealing with a Braves fan over here. Uh oh, issue with the snap. And Jeter is going to go down, and it's a 10 point game with 9 11 to go. And the Beamer family never likes the special teams mistake. There have been a couple of low snaps. Another low snap that time. Joshua Simon, the newest South Carolina star, and the Gamecocks up 10. How about Spencer Rattler in Columbia? This year for Shane Beamer, Spencer 16 touchdown passes, no interceptions at home. That's in his last four games here. And Florida, once again, will start at the 25. And Graham Mertz, who's had a good day too. Mertz approaching 300 yards passing, 277 yards to be exact on a touchdown. He's got some gator in his hands, huh? Not much of one. Wow. Oh, just the visor of a gator. The gator's got to find a way to protect Mertz better. I mean, this is the, that's been the issue. Best couple of possessions. He just has not had time to operate the offense. South Carolina, which is not a great attacking defense. They don't spend a lot of time in your backfield. Mertz wants to load up on the first play. In the double coverage, almost picked off. He was trying to get it to Aiden Mizell. But you see Dial down there. Mizell's one of those speedy freshmen. We heard about them yesterday. This time, plenty of time on first down. You load up. What a great job by Dial. Really lucky. The Gator offense maintaining that possession. Dial could have easily come up with a pick there. Just 49 yards passing for Mertz in the second half after going over 200 in the first half. This is a good ball. And past the 40 goes Pearsall. It's been quiet in the second half. 17 more. Good protection again. You know, even Rory comes off the edge. He gives it away. Maybe George 
He's sitting there calling it out. Kind of did not bluff that pressure off the edge very well. Six balls, 90 yards for Pearsall now. Mertz to Pearsall again. Right near the first down marker. As Kilgore pushes him out. And the Florida fans know they're right in it. You see he's starting to push the ball in there to number one. Seventh target of the game. Six catches now for the veteran receiver. Mertz. Too tall for Jackson, who wasn't ready for it. Kilgore running stride for stride. Jackson with two fantastic catches in the first half. Well, Florida aggressive on this possession. You see these first downs just coming out, throwing shots big time downfield. Both times now they've missed trying to push it. And that time, Burks a little wide with that football. Jackson couldn't make the adjustment. The protection so far has held up. Second and 10, another good ball. Turn and run for Boardingham. It'll be third down now for the Gators, and you said it, Stench, in the second half of games this year, Florida's really struggled on this down, and they're 0 of 3 today. This half, it's just gotten so quiet. We talked about Mertz being so clutch on third downs there in the first half, nearly a 50% conversion. We've been sub 20% here in the second half. To imagine this is four down territory and there this is going to make it a little more challenging illegal snap offense number 66 five yard penalty down. Yeah. can you tell how badly shane beamer wants to win this football game I mean, you got a backup center there jake slaughter he started last week he had some other starts earlier in the season but Kingsley Equigon couldn't go. And that time the noise got the Jake Slaughters leaning back prior to his own snap. Mertz has been great on third and long all day. A similar formation they saw earlier. Pearsall in the bunch. Quick throw. It'll be fourth down. As the ball was intended for Jackson, he could not make the catch. But Fortune getting a hand in there. And he worked it into Jackson, but he had Pearsall right over the ball. Had a little bit more room, but you nailed it earlier, Taylor. And here you are just barely in plus territory. And you've had a difficult time prior to this series protecting be surprised if they don't leave extra blockers in. On fourth and 11, Mertz throws short. Boardingham breaks a tackle. First down, Gators out at the 35. Wow. He's sitting looking in there, that Boardingham and Etienne. I'm thinking, I'll oh, leave them in to protect. Nope, you get flushed right now. Boardingham breaks that first tackle. Etienne got out there and shielded just enough. What a conversion. You mentioned it, third and 10 plus all game long, Taylor. Needed 11, got 14. Down to the 35. And a good ball to Pearsall inside the 20. First down, Gators in the red zone. Landon Greer pushed him out. 19 get, more for Pearsall. If you get 15 time, this kid's an, he is an accurate passer. Another four-man rush, gave him plenty of time. Step into the throw, layers it right in there. You see what the Gators have done in the red zone. They've scored on every possession. In fact, they've scored 26 straight times, but more field goals than touchdowns down here today. Down 10 to the end zone, Burke. Incomplete. A lot of hand fighting down there with David Spaulding. I thought that was uncatchable because Burke got spun completely around. I mean, 
Yeah, there's no doubt that Spalding, he's sitting there going, hey, man, he, he had my jersey, by the V of my jersey, did Spalding pretty obviously. And Eamon Worry just limped off the field for South Carolina. Second and nine, slant and Boardingham again. It'll be down to the seven, just short of a first down. This is where those tight ends become more and more prominent for the Gators. We saw it earlier, Hayden Hansen as well getting targeted. Mertz off the back foot, throws, incomplete looking for Pearsall. With fortune on him. Now, it's fourth and one. Now the Gators need 10 points, since They gotta score twice, but Billy Napier, yep, and there you go. He's yeah, gonna say, yeah. send the field goal team out. Wow, he, he's, he's actually, I thought the same thing. He's just sending a tight end he's out. Sent in Hanson. So there's 89, Hayden Hanson. A little bit of confusion as to where to line up. And he and 89, so Boardingham and Hanson swapping sides. Trying to hard count it. Gets it off with one, ETN, first and goal, Gators inside the five. Well, I tell you, Taylor, Damian George leans in at right tackle, and in a situation like that, when you're, it looks like you're trying to get a team to jump, it's a good thing he didn't do it suddenly. Otherwise, you're thinking that could be a motion penalty. It's so the first run of the series. This is the 13th play, ETN on the second run of this drive, doesn't get anything. I'm talking Hemingway. He has had a game. Now the clock an issue for Florida is to go under five minutes to go. Yep. When you think about possession-wise, it's not only getting stops, but getting back, getting the stop and back in time to be able to do something with it. You saw Hemingway, we've called his name numerous times. He's done a really good job in the interior. Fake to ETN, rolling out over Boardingham, saying, what a catch! Touchdown, Arliss Boardingham on an overthrown ball. He sticks his paw up there. And this terrific redshirt freshman with another touchdown. Kind of had to recover. Spalding grabbed his jersey. Boardingham comes all the way across. Great job by Boardingham coming up there and just stopping that ball with his left hand. Good job of actually kind of regaining momentum on his route. Spalding grabbed him on the release. Excellent job by Boardingham and the extra point by Smack is good. Game on, 440 to go. South Carolina ball, up three. Columbia on a late Saturday afternoon in October, Graham Mertz fired up after leading Florida on that drive all the way down to a touchdown. Crucial play was the fourth and 11 completion to Arliss Boardingham to keep the drive alive. I mean, you think about that. Now, no one is sitting there going at this point, what's it going to take? And it was a short completion too. You know, the yardage needed was nowhere near the distance that ball traveled. Great job by Boardingham and Etienne figuring out a way to get it upfield and get the conversion. Short kick, Juju McDowell comes up the field and at the 17 yard line gives himself up just past the 25. You know, the last few years doing this game, we've seen the other one blow out the other on their home field, totally different story. Yeah, I mean, this, whole, this entire game, it's been back and forth. Started out, both offenses blowing and going. Big plays, that's continued. Then early here in the second half, it's like protection. Nobody can remember how to keep a quarterback upright. All of a sudden, Florida, in that answer, in their series, protected much better. Even then, they went backwards enough to require that fourth and 10 plus conversion. Gators got to get off the field. Two timeouts left, 4.36 to go. Rattler's got Anderson behind him in this pistol set. 
Mario gets past the 30 up to the 32. Can the Skater defense get off the field, Alyssa? Well, it's hard not to be fired up when you play defense for Austin Armstrong, guys. He was telling us yesterday how he's constantly holding up the number one to his guys. One play, one drive, one moment. Doing that the entire time the defense was on the bench for the last 10, 15 minutes or so, willing them to continue to lock in also helps when you have former Florida Gator legend Brandon Spikes down here hyping the guys up too. Well, Austin's defense today has given up 154 yards rushing. That's a season high for South Carolina. Rattler on a second and five. Asked somebody to go deep. Way down there's Brown. And there's all the incomplete. Double covered Jason Marshall. There's a flag that comes in. Miguel Mitchell down there too. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 99 defense. Automatic first down. That's just, you know, we talk about the difficulties the Gators have on the road. And who knows how this one turns out? You just can't do that. It's well covered. You got your quarterback. He's on like this half rollout. Where do you want to go with this football? He's down there trying to direct traffic. The ball's clearly out. You just can't do it. Personal foul. It's a first down and a half, a second and five, trying to get the ball back. And instead, you commit a penalty like that. To the 47. 346 left. Rattler turns and hands to Anderson, and Anderson's trapped in the backfield for a loss. Tyreek Sapp, motivational leader of this Florida defense. Second and long. The yeah, ball is kind of low coming back to him, too. Should both these offensive lines kind of re envisioned for this game. Sapp did a great job underneath the would be block of Trey Knox to track that one down. You know, the Gator defense typically coming into this game, they were good about generating negative yardage play or forcing third and longs. As you see, Austin Armstrong trying to get the attention. Just livid with somebody who's in the wrong position. Leggett on the toss ahead. And it's out of the 47 yard line where Jaden Hill makes the tackle. And they say that he was tackled in bounds. Here comes a big third down. Now I think Austin Armstrong, he was calling the play. He was coming out there. As you can see, that adjustment right before Leggett went into motion. Looked to me like he was saying, hey guys, here's this is what's about to come. And interesting here to use one of those two timeouts on this third and 10 with 2.58 to go. We'll take it with him. Back to see what happens on a critical third down with Gamecocks up three. There's our game summary. In other words, it's been fun. A lot of great offense in it. South Carolina, 37-34 lead. What does Dowell Loggins, the offensive coordinator, call against Austin Armstrong in this Florida defense on a third and 10? Xavier Leggett's at the top of your screens right here. Right here on the hash. Rattler in press, under pressure throws. Underneath, it's caught. It was Knox that made the catch. Florida will elect to use its last timeout. They called that timeout on the on the end around to the get. They preserved about 40 seconds doing that. They brought the house. Uman Miel and one right now. Force Rattler out of that pocket early. Could feel the pressure. Good job by Mitchell coming up and making that play. I think they called that timeout on the handoff to Leggett. It could have, could have, if they don't call that timeout, it'd been about 2:12 or so after this play. Instead, they hung on to about a minute's worth of time. So South Carolina will snap this from their own 47-yard line, and you always have to pay close attention when Shane Beamer and special teams coordinator Pete Limbo are dialing things up. Kai Kroger's been phenomenal with fakes. 
50 left in the fourth quarter. He wouldn't roll the dice here, would Man, he? Man, that would be really bold. Kroger did have that bad punt in the first half. Punts it away. And that goes off the side of his foot. And it'll give Florida the football at the 25-yard line, just a 28-yard punt. Here's the last drive for the Gators. Well, they finally got some protection early. They took a couple of shots, but this is the fourth down play to Boardingham. Breaks the tackle, got a little bit of the shield block from ETN. Then he pushed it downfield to Pearsall. And Boardingham finished it off. They were able to get it in the end zone. They had to have it. Fourth down conversion was the story in that one. And now you know, the Gator defense went out and they did their job. Got the ball back for their offense. Career high in passing yards for Graham Mertz today. Finding eight different receivers. He needs another 40 yards to give them to get them into field goal range. 75 for the lead. No timeouts to work with for the Gators. First down throw, incomplete. Some confusion with Khalil Jackson. It's a couple of times in this game where there was a little bit of confusion seemingly. You know, earlier, I was saying, you know, Burks was maybe off target, but I think perhaps maybe there's a chance that he and Khalil Jackson just on different pages. Even Worry back in the game for the Gamecocks. They've been bringing him off the edge. Mertz. Over the head of Burke. Covered up by Dial. Third down. Well, that time, you know, Mertz is scrambling to the right. That trade Wilson over there to that side. Wilson's breaking the opposite direction. That's really tough on your quarterback who's rolling right and have to throw all the way across his body. He just had to burn that one. Huge third down, obviously. This four down territory, they're going to keep on at it. And South Carolina has been able to get home more often today than they have just about all season. Facing pressure again, and this one is incomplete. Looking for Boardingham with Kilgore on him, and Florida's 0 for 6 on the third downs in the second half. And Boardingham split out wide. Here's your gotta have it down. Gators have been or two of two on fourth. They have to have it. Game on the line. His best receiver is right here, Ricky Pearsall. It's out of pressure. Throws down the field to Pearsall. Caught midfield on a great one-on-one -on -one ball with Eamon Worry, and Florida's in business. Unreal. Another fourth down conversion for the Gators. The previous drive is fourth and 11. You get more than enough, and now again to extend this drive. Under two minutes left. And incomplete behind Pearsall. T.J. Sanders, I believe, got a hand in on that one. Here's that fourth down play. Like that ball, that pressure right now off the edge. D.Q. Smith, that leaves Eamon Worry in coverage. And Pearsall, this ball is behind him. He slam on the brakes. Eamon Worry was over the top. Pearsall able to come up with a clutch catch on fourth down. And once again, South Carolina, they weren't scared. They brought that pressure. It was going to get home. Mertz able to buy just enough time. 155 left. And a handoff to Johnson. Johnson, first down run, down to the 37, right on the edge of Trey Smack's field goal range. A 12 yard gain. How about that? You get a light box, everybody's thinking pass, and they pop a run. That's the kind you gotta have, too, if you're gonna hand it off. The first down, the clock stopped. Now rolls again, now that the chains are set. On the slant, thrown behind and caught off the carom. Down to the 15 goes Eugene Wilson. 
Pearsall couldn't make the catch and went right into Wilson's hands, 22 yards to the 16-yard line. That's hard to believe that that just happened off that carry. Mertz. Johnson stopped for a loss back at the 24. Tonka Hemingway. Man. Boy, 91's had him a game. Couldn't come at a better time. A tip pass off of Pearsall. How about Trey Wilson's awareness? He kept running that route. It's almost like the ball was intended for him. May have been if Pearsall doesn't tip that ball. Under a minute to go. Second and 15, Mertz pumps. Over the middle, Pearsall, touchdown, Gators! There is a flag down back where Mertz threw the ball. Touchdown is good. Personal foul, welcome the passer, seven defense. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. What a game by Graham Mertz. Well, Taylor, we said he was clutch on third down in the first half. He was clutch on fourth down here in the second half. You think about a fourth and 11 conversion, fourth and two, fourth and 10, unreal. And Smack makes it a four point game. 47 seconds left. But South Carolina does have all three of their timeouts. A little bit of a shoulder fake. He's working the left side, comes right back to his favorite target, Ricky Pearsall. Working against Eamon Worry in coverage. That's a matchup that they've looked to exploit a lot in this game. That's a big body corner. And you see Mertz, well, he's taken some shots the past two weeks, that time a little bit late, which will be enforced on the kickoff, incidentally. So if you're thinking, you know, Bieber ball here, try to get good field position. That penalty now, that looms large on this kickoff. And effectively. I'll tell you what also looms large is that missed extra point yeah, great by point. South Carolina. Instead of it being a 41-38 game, Gamecocks must score a touchdown with 47 seconds to go. That's a great point. There have been a several low snaps. They just couldn't handle it on that one. And you're right. You know, this is an end zone game now for South Carolina. Into the stands it goes, and Spencer Rattler has been outstanding today. He has all three of his timeouts. He has to take his Gamecock team 75 yards. He does a, such a great job of extending plays. We've talked about that. He has hurt almost everybody, but even again, Florida today with the scramble game, he's been opportunistic. We've only seen him run at one time on a pull, 46 yards on the ground, but keep that in mind, especially in a two minute drill, under a minute in this instance with 47 on the clock, but a guy that can extend the play, you just gotta be smart. Plenty of time, but the pocket breaks down and he has to throw it into the floor to bench. Everyone was covered up down the field as Sapp got pressure on Rattler. Nearly 10 seconds on that play alone. You know, sometimes you see it where the quarterback, if you can't scramble, get positive yards, there's nothing there. They're so good at buying time that they buy too much. You almost want them to burn it quicker. If it's not there, burn it, get back to the next down. The clock looms large in this scenario. Rattler just has to dump it off. Joyner, first down and out of bounds. Up at the 36 with 29 seconds left. Well, there's plenty of room on that side. That's for sure. He still had that full complement of timeouts. Dumping it off to Dakari and Joyner. Now only 
under 30 seconds now. He's smart with how efficient you can be. You want to get a chunk if you can. Rattler drifts back. Throws down the field and picked off. It's Miguel Mitchell. With 20 seconds to go in the game. It's the first turnover of the entire game. And it's Miguel Mitchell who missed last week due to injury that gets the interception. And only the third takeaway all season for the Gators. The pressure in his face, Spencer Rattler. And he's just trying to force it to Leggett downfield. I just mentioned you want to get a chunk. He's got it in his head. Well, this one never had a chance. A safety deep underneath. Protection collapsed. The difference in this game. It started off hot for South Carolina. The changes, the adjustments they made up front that time just couldn't hold up. They get a bad decision with their final possession. Now, South Carolina does have all three of their timeouts left. Victory formation, and Shane Beamer is going to make them snap it as he should. That just timeout, South Carolina, the first of the half, 30 second timeout. It only took one second off the clock. Let's take a look at the Saturday MVP brought to you by Sport Clips, and it's obvious who that should be. Graham Burks with the best day of his collegiate career. Uh, no question. Uh, he was clutch, took some shots, some big shots in this game. Might want to take a little bit longer to kneel down. That was a one-second play. I haven't seen that in a while. Well, now this one from shotgun, and now Mertz will run around for a little bit before he gives himself up wisely. And that takes seven seconds off the clock as the Gamecocks use their second timeout. Jake Slaughter in there, center. The guy's got some starts, you know, make him snap it. You look at this game though, Taylor, the way it opened up, both these offenses kind of had similar issues. Now, the way they've moved the ball this season has been different, obviously. South Carolina through the air. Florida, when they've had some success, it's been in the ground game largely. Burks has been efficient, but not explosive. Well, we saw some big shots in this game from both sides, but it was the old lines that needed to step up, and they did certainly in that first half. Florida lost 13 of their last 14 games away from home 10 of that last 11 on the road and they were down 10 just over five minutes to go in the game as Mertz will be giving himself up with eight seconds left as South Carolina uses that last time out Billy Napier's Gators are eight seconds away from improving to five and two on the season. And this was that game-winning drive one more time. Hey, buys time, gets it to Ricky Pearsall. Felt that pressure, was able to get it to him. Then the carom, which was just unbelievable. The doink pass off of Pearsall to Wilson and then right back to number one to put him ahead. And now eight seconds away from closing it out. As you mentioned, Taylor, for a team that has struggled mightily on the road I for know, some time. I will say, while last year South Carolina blocked six kicks, best special teams in the nation, they have not done it yet this year. Yet, if I'm Florida, the last hunt block team I want to see coming are the Gamecocks. So this is not over yet. And Mertz is he coming back out there on a fourth and 29. He is. Eight seconds to go. 
Let's see how he's going to use up all this time. The average plays about six seconds. Oh, he's going to take a safety. Yep. And run out with three seconds to go. The stadium that filled up for sure in this game. The Florida went right down the field. You thought, does it take the crowd out of it in South Carolina? Just swapping punches in the middle of the ring that first half. They had an impact earlier, especially in this half on some third downs. So then the kick is going to come from the 20 yard line. As you see the standings, if Florida wins, they're three and one. Play the Dogs in two weeks. That's their next game in Jacksonville with the East very much on the line. Meanwhile, South Carolina, who clearly can play with any team in college football. Please reset the game clock to four seconds. Would fall to two and four with a loss today. I don't know how if you play these first six games over, South Carolina wouldn't have a better record. It Every break, it seems, has gone against the Gamecocks, whether it was the Tar Heels, yep. Georgia, or Florida. They had the lead in all three of those games. And they seem to have figured some things out, especially up front. I mean, this offense looked much different. You almost you doubled up your run production from what you've averaged all season. You know, 152 on the ground. They picked up quite a bit of passing yards because of it. So Smack is going to punt this. From the 20 and McDowell, actually it's Joyner that picks it up at the 19. And they'll start trying to throw the laterals and they can't pull it off. The Gators down 10 in the fourth quarter come storming back and Billy Napier gets a huge road win over Shane Beamer's South Carolina Gamecocks. What a game in Columbia. Down to Alyssa. Coach, your team went on the road in a crazy environment and pulls out the win. How did they do it? I'm going to tell you what, this, this group of players is special. You know, we had our best week of practice. We, we're growing up. There's a lot of young players out there uh, making plays. And look, we played, we played together. You know, they never, they never gave up on each other, right, throughout the entire game. Can you believe we get baited in this? Um, I'm proud of our staff. You know, we've been through a lot. And uh, to go on the road and win a game like this, you know, the, the intangibles of this team, the character of this team, uh, we got good people. We're building something. Better days are ahead. And uh, it's always good to go on that open date with a win like that right there. What kind of toughness did you see from your quarterback in his leadership tonight? I mean, I can't tell you how proud I am of Graham Mertz. The amount of work, you know, to start 32 games at Wisconsin, to show up at Florida, to start over, the work ethic, right? Applying all the things he learned at Wisconsin, the leadership he's shown, uh, and man, what a competitor, right? I mean, are you kidding me? That was incredible. Um, kid's got grit, man. Uh, he's fun to coach. Show up every day excited about being around the guy. And um, he's what the University of Florida football should be. What did the headset sound like from Coach Armstrong when you came up with the game tie, game ceiling interception? You know, we battled all day, man. Uh, that was a lot, a lot of credit to Shane and his team, man. I mean, they played really well uh, in the game. There's a ton of situational football in this game all the way down to the last snap. So we got a lot of credit for Coach Beamer, the type of program and team that he has. This is a great place. It's a tough venue. In this league, you go play on the road, you better be ready to go. Thanks, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. God bless. Two class acts on both sides of the screen. He said, can we... Can you believe we get paid to do this? Our statistician, Kevin Maloney, says that before every game, and it was a privilege to watch these two teams. So we talked all week about being able to come on the road, execute, and get a win. How did you do it tonight? <laughs> Honestly, I, th I think it goes back to the week of prep. I mean, across the board, from coaching staff to players and support staff, I mean, we were, every day we were on. So and I think we just owe that to our entire organization. Like it was, it was truly a full organization win. So that was, uh, it was fun. You guys are two veteran leaders on this team, Ricky. What were you telling your offense down the stretch in this one? It just takes one drive, one drive at a time, one play at a time. 
you know, I just want to shout out the guys up front, the big dudes up front. Shout out this guy right here. You know, they did a hell of a job today. I'm just so happy for them. What did you guys see from your defense to not only keep you guys in this one, but finish it out? I think they're gritty. I, I think any time we got that defense, we're in the game. Um, I, I kept telling them, and I, I love how close our team is because I can go up to them and be like, hey, you get to stop here, man. We can, we can go win this thing, and we're going to go win it. And uh, just the response in their eyes, I mean, I, I knew what they, were, what they were on, and I knew they were ready to go. So, I mean, I love, I love Coach Armstrong and that entire group, so we're, we're blessed to have them. I know we were talking about it a second ago, but take me through the tip pass that Eugene ends up coming down with. What was going through your mind? I'll talk about this. So, Rick, Ricky was wide open. Ricky was wide open on the slant. I threw it behind him. Uh, he did a good job of propping it up because he knew Trey was right behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all, all we, we knew it was going to happen the whole time. No. <laughs> Just like you drew it up. Great, 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 shout, shout out Trey. Yeah, great, 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 great play by Trey. Congratulations on the win, guys. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.